Okay, let's take a look and see what happens inside the brain. The prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that helps you assess risk. Think about consequences. Think about your future. But it's not fully developed till about age 25 or 26. Because the prefrontal cortex is still developing, teenagers rely more than adults do on a part of the brain called the amygdala to make decisions and solve problems. The amygdala is the part of our brain that focuses on our basic needs. You can think of it as a caveman just trying to stay alive. The way it deals with basic needs is to create memories and pathways in response to pleasure so that we want to keep doing the things that keep us alive, like eating, sleeping, and human interaction. Our experiences actually make or break connections and pathways in our brain, especially during the teen years when the brain is in an intense development stage. When you eat a piece of chocolate cake, you get a blast of dopamine, which is sometimes referred to as the happy hormone. The dopamine spikes up and then returns back to normal levels from doing things that are pleasurable, like hanging with friends, dating, being in nature, or exercising. When you drink or use drugs, you get a large blast of dopamine. But our body is not used to getting such a large amount, so the response is to tamp it down and it returns lower than normal. But the caveman in our amygdala, hardwired for survival, craves those pleasure activities and craves the behavior that causes dopamine to spike. So it sets up this pattern of craving the behavior, getting a dopamine spike, and then tamping it down, each time going lower and lower. This pattern is hardwiring that pathway where memory and pleasure are stored. Well, the stronger the amygdala and the cravings are, the bigger the influence of the caveman and the smaller the influence of the prefrontal cortex in terms of decision making. Over time, your body figures out to adjust the dopamine lower from drinking or using drugs. So a person that is looking for a high needs to drink more to get the same high they used to. And now the dopamine level is lower and people start to drink or use drugs just to stop from feeling so bad. Drugs literally hijack that reward system and the amygdala. The caveman is making the decisions and is strongly craving that high to the point that it drives behavior as if there is no risk assessment or thinking about consequences and denial is strong people's behavior starts to diverge from who they really are. On a science-y level, when you don't have them, your dopamine levels are down, so it's, you, you don't feel good like you would normally without those things. So your brain is like, I need those things to feel better. And, um, but like, you don't, they don't, they, they don't make you feel better in, the, yeah. <laughs> in the long run of things. So like, those things you don't think long term, especially when you're using, they just don't really matter. Like when I got, you know, summons to court and stuff, I would just throw out the letter and pretend like, you know, they're never going to like, it's not that big of a deal. Like I would just make the very big fires in my life into little teeny tiny flames. Like they didn't really matter. The glow just hits you so hard. It hits you so much harder than um, you would without it because now your brain is just like seeking out this endorphin rush that you can't get naturally and so my lows would be very low. Drugs and alcohol is completely um, operant conditioning. It's like Pavlov's dog. Every time you ring the bell the dog gets fed. So every time you're sad you use. So anytime in the future when you're feeling sad your brain automatically goes well I should use instead of seeking other help, instead of talking to my friends, uh, going to therapy, taking my actual medication, if you're on it, it kind of conditions us to think we should use these unhealthy coping me mechanisms because it's always what we've done. If you think of the craving part of addiction as a magnet, the more you use, the bigger the magnet becomes. It takes a lot to pull away from that force, but it can be done, and people do return to a happy life. I did it. I pulled away. But the best thing is not to become addicted in the first place. You know, a lot of people think addiction is a moral weakness and that they can just man up and stop. But let me tell you, it's not that easy.